This video covers basic chart, bar chart with negative values. The structure of this video is as follows. Visual code walkthrough, JavaScript code build, and the summary. All right, let's get started. Visual code walkthrough. We will use the data from the d3js.org website bar chart with negative values example. From this video on, we will be highlighting the areas that are new or different from previous videos. First, we start with the doc type, meta character set, and the CSS styling. This is the standard doc type setting, meta character set definition, and the CSS styling of the DOM elements we will generate through the use of the d3.js. The new styling elements are the dot bar dot negative and dot bar dot positive definitions. These will be used to style the bars that have negative data and the bars that have positive data. This means that we will be using an if then conditional statement in the D3 code to properly assign the HTML classes that get the correct CSS styling. Next, we go into the JavaScript section of the document. First, we load the d3.js JavaScript library from the web. This uses the D3 code hosted by the d3js.org website. Next, we go into the D3 code. This example is different from the others because we are not using a web server to serve the data. In this case, we are just using a small array of numbers for the data set. This array has positive and negative values. Note that the data is not an array of JavaScript objects, it is an array of numbers. Next, we see the D3 margin convention set up to specify what the SVG container size is, as well as define the inner drawing space. The SVG container will be 500 pixels tall by 960 pixels wide. Next, we have the JavaScript global object called math. This object has built-in properties and methods for mathematical constants and functions. The method we use here is max. This returns the largest of zero or more numbers. In this case, we are passing to it the negative of the smallest number in the data set according to d3.min. Since we know that we have negative numbers in the data set, putting a negative sign in front of it will make it positive. Second, we pass in the largest number in the data set. Since we know we have positive numbers in the data set, this will be a positive number. Passing two positive numbers into the math.max function gives us the biggest absolute value of a number in the data set. This is used later to set up the domain of the x scaling function. For now, we assign this number to the x0 variable. Next, we have a linear scale function for the x axis data. This code creates a linear scaling function where the domain is defined as going from the negative value of the largest absolute value of the data set going to the positive value of the same largest absolute value of the data set. This ensures that the zero of the domain will be found in the middle of the chart. The range is then defined as going from zero to the width of the inner drawing space. Lastly, the scale is nice using the dot nice function to extend it to the nearest round numbers. Next, we have an ordinal scale function for the y-axis data. This code creates an ordinal scaling function where the range goes from zero to the height of the inner drawing space. This ordinal scaling function is using the range round bands to set the bands. Also, the point two is the padding added to offset the bands from the edge of the interval. This code is also setting the domain to an array of numbers as specified by the d3.range of the length of the data array. This is new. d3.range is functionality provided by d3 for working with arrays. This functionality generates an array containing an arithmetic progression. Here we are passing in one number. So this functionality will generate an array that starts with element 0 being 0, element 1 being 1, all the way to element 7 being 7. This functionality does not include the number to stop at in the array. So it will create an array of numbers from 0 to the length of the array, minus 1. Next, we create the x axis function. We pass in the x scale function we created earlier and give the axis an orientation of top. This means that the text will be above the line. Note that we do not create a y axis function. This is because the array is a one-dimensional array of data. So while we represent it in two dimensions as a bar chart, the y-axis does not contain any information. 
The next code creates the SVG container and the inner drawing space. The next code is where D3 creates the rectangles to represent the positive and negative valued bars or the bar chart. We will go through this code line by line to make sure it's clear what happens at each step. The first three lines are the D3 building process. We select DOM elements, bind the data, choose the enter selection, and append the DOM elements to merge them with placeholder elements. The next line assigns a class to the rectangles created based on the data that was bound to the specific rectangle. This code assigns an attribute to the SVG rectangle using the JavaScript ternary operator syntax. The anonymous function is then used to return the value of the ternary operator functionality result so that the attribute is set correctly. JavaScript ternary operator syntax is a way to write simple if-else statements on one line instead of many lines. As you can see on the screen, the first way is a perfectly valid way to write an if-else statement that assigns to a variable two different values depending on whether the conditional is true or false. The second statement does the exact same thing, just in a much shorter and cleaner syntax. It takes up one line. Going back to the code, this line uses the ternary operator syntax. The ternary operator syntax has the conditional statement checked to see if the data point is less than zero. If it is, then the string bar negative is returned. Otherwise, the string bar positive is returned. The next line of code is the most important part of the chart. This is where the x value gets set for where the SVG rectangle will be drawn from. SVG rectangles are drawn from the top left point. The SVG rectangle width and height cannot be negative. So we have to pay close attention to whether the data is negative or positive to choose how to position the X coordinate for the SVG rectangle. The way this is done is by using the JavaScript math object method min. If the data point is positive, then we are drawing a positive rectangle, which means the top left point should be at the zero axis coordinate. If the data point is negative, then we are drawing a negative rectangle, which means the top left point should start at the negative data point scaled through the x-axis scaling function. This ensures that the top left point is defined correctly. The next line separate the bars from each other according to the index of the number within the data array. This code takes in the index number from the data bound to the specific rectangle and passes it to the y-ordinal scaling function. This will return a number from the range round band. This ensures the rectangles are placed neatly and nicely on the Y axis. The next line defines the width of the rectangle. First, we get the data point that was bound to the rectangle and pass it to the X scaling function. Then we subtract from this number the X scaling function result of passing zero into it. If the data point was positive, then this will result in a positive number. Because we are subtracting two numbers after they have been scaled, they will be correctly scaled to fit into the SVG coordinate space. This result is then passed to the JavaScript math object absolute value method. This returns the absolute value of this subtraction, which is then used to set the width of the rectangle. Next, we define the height of the SVG rectangles with the HTML class of bar. The height is just the band as was calculated from the Y range round band ordinal scale function this ensures all the rectangles have the same height and spacing. Next, we call d3.axis operator for the x-axis. First, the code appends an SVG group element to hold the x-axis. Then, the x-axis function is called. Lastly, we create the y-axis using an SVG straight line. Note that we do not call the d3.axis operator because we did not define or create a y-axis function. All we need to do is draw a straight line from the X coordinate zero point at the top of the inner drawing space to the X coordinate zero point at the bottom of the inner drawing space. This is done by defining the X1, Y1, X2, and Y2 attributes for the SVG straight line basic object. And that is the end of the D3 JavaScript functionality. When this is done, the graph will have been fully generated. Let's now build this part by part in JavaScript. JavaScript code build. We start by opening an HTML web page that already has D3 linked to it. We then open the Chrome developer tools and test to make sure D3 loaded correctly and then clear the screen.
Next, we go step by step building the visualization. First, we copy the data array from the d3js.org example for the bar chart with negative values. Then, we define the margins and the width and height of the inner drawing space. Next, we define the x0, which dictates based on the data passed in what the max x and min x will be for the bar chart. Let's check what the minimum number and maximum number of the data set are. We use an array to compute both numbers on the same line. You can see that the smallest number is negative 26. Let's check what x0 is. x0 is 26, which is what was expected. Next, define the x linear scaling function based on the domain, range, and nicing of the values. Let's check to see what the domain of the x scaling function became once we use the nice function. We can see that the domain now goes from negative 30 to 30 rather than the negative 26 to 26 that was initially passed to the domain. Again, this is the nicing function coming into action. Next, define the y ordinal scaling function. The domain is created from the array of numbers from 0 to the length of the data array minus 1. The range is created from the range round bands according to the height of the inner drawing space. Let's check to see what the data array length is. We can see that the data array length is 8 elements. Next, let's check to see what passing the number 8 to the d3.range function does. As expected, it creates an array of numbers starting at 0 going up one by one to the number 7, where number 7 is the length of the data array minus 1. Next, define the x-axis function and provide it with a scale and orientation. Next, define the SVG container and the inner drawing space. This is the first sign of anything occurring in the browser. Up to now, we have just been defining functions that will use or be used by the data that is passed in. Next comes the code that will create the rectangles. Before we do that, let's go through the exercise of creating a rectangle for the very first number in the data array. This number is negative 15. First, we append an SVG rectangle to the inner drawing space. You can see the rectangle. Next, let's add the rectangle attributes according to how the D3 example code does it. First, we have to assign a class to it based on the JavaScript ternary operator syntax. Data 0 is negative 15. So because negative 15 is less than 0, the if then statement tells us to use the bar negative string. Let's add this attribute to the rectangle. You can see that the rectangle now has the class of bar negative. Next, we define the x coordinate point on the inner drawing space for where the rectangle should be drawn from. We calculate which is smaller, 0 or the first element of the data array. Negative 15 is smaller. We then pass the negative 15 to the x scaling function. This tells us that the top left point of the rectangle will start at the inner space x coordinate point of 235. So we assign the x attribute to the rectangle. Next, we calculate the inner space y coordinate point for the first element in the data set array. Since the data set is defined in an array and arrays are zero index based, the first index number is zero. y ordinal scaling function of zero gives us 12. This tells us that the top left point of the rectangle will start at the inner drawing space y coordinate point of 12. So we assign the y attribute to the rectangle. Next, we calculate the width of the rectangle. This tells us that the width of the rectangle will be 235. So we assign the width attribute to the rectangle. Next, we calculate the height of the rectangle. This tells us that the height of the rectangle will be 45. So we assign the height attribute to the rectangle. And now you can see the rectangle on the screen. Let's delete the rectangle from the Chrome Developer Tools element section in order to have a clear chart to draw all the rectangles on. Next, we create the bars. You can see all the bars. Let's take a look at the first bar to see if it looks familiar. It looks exactly like what we calculated earlier. The X is at 235, the Y is at 12, the width is 235 and the height is 45. Because we are not applying any CSS to style the bars, let's do the styling of the rectangles in D3. Let's finish up by adding the X and Y axis lines. First, we add the X axis by calling the D3 axis operator for the X axis. 
Then we add the y axis by drawing the SVG straight line. Note that we added three extra style attributes at the end to make sure the line was visible. In the example, the styling is applied in the CSS section of the document. And there we go. We have the finished bar chart. Let's close the Chrome Developer Tools to get a better look. You can see the full picture. The only difference between this and the example was the styling applied to the various DOM elements. And with that, we have built the basic chart bar chart with negative values. We used a linear scaling function to properly place the X and Y points for the SVG rectangles based on whether the data values were positive or negative. We also used an ordinal scaling function to place the rectangles equally spaced along the Y axis. The summary. This video provided a visual code walkthrough, a JavaScript code build, and the summary.